Assalamu alaikum, a very good evening and welcome to this week's episode of Eye on Business. Um, this week's episode I would like to speak about impact on government grant on businesses. As we are going through difficult time in our lives, whether it's business, family and everything that rotates around it. Today's guest I have uh, three um, very no well-known faces today. I have on my right Dr. Sanwar Chaudhary, accountant, entrepreneur, community activist. Then we have on my further right Ma Martin Real, who is the head of Family Bowling. And then we have Samad Bai, who is the director of Spice Lounge. A very good evening to you, gentlemen, and welcome to this week's episode of Ion Business. Asalaamu Alaikum. Gentlemen, um, as we are in this very difficult situation, okay, Samad Bhai is, is really on terms of the restaurant, what you're facing. Sanwar Bhai could really tell me, you know, the, the grants that we had from the government, has it really benefited the business in whole? The 10,000 grant that was given by the council, uh, the £25,000, in terms of the staff have been furloughed, yes, they are at home. Do you think that has really benefited the business itself? I think um, we're going through some exceptional times. I personally believe the grants and the government help that came, uh, came too much too quickly. It should have been spread out. Um, we need those grants now. Businesses are suffering now. They're running out of cash now, not perhaps three months ago. They could have managed those early one or two months. I think later on, salary furloughs were good, but I think they needed to think about it, do a more uh, a top-up model like what Germany did. So I think what we did was, this is all new to us anyway, so everybody uh, didn't know what they were doing. I think we locked down far too late. We should have knocked down in January. That would have helped us not pay out as much as we did. But I think now, ending in October, when the second wave is about to hit, I think you know the government has done too much too quickly, and they haven't really planned it out. You're saying it's a second wave, yeah? Um, we are on second week, third week of school opening, and we have about 360 plus school closures. You know. Really, do you, do, do you gentlemen you know, acknowledge that the school, op is it, has it opened too early? Has it should have been done differently? The virus, has it, you know, is it spreading from school students and is it going, uh, you know, what? what? I, I think this, I don't know, some other will agree, but the eat out to help out has really exasperated this pandemic. It's really spread this virus more than it needed to. The school opening without the proper precautions might have helped in little ways as well. But we knew that a second wave was coming. Winter was about to um, you know, come September, October time. We knew during the colder months the virus would pick up. But luckily, we're now um, facing, uh, we, we've got much better facilities to test for positive cases. So we couldn't test those before. But even though those have been tested, I know three people that were um, uh, tested positive, and within three, four, five days, they were well enough, and within 10 days, they were fully recovered to come back to work. So even though more positive cases are coming along, we're not getting the illnesses that sort of result in deaths that we used to uh, in March, April, mm. uh, that we used to have before. Martin, I mean, um, you work with a lot of families, you yes. know. In terms of family life, how, how has the, you know, COVID-19 affected your business or your, your profession? Yeah. How, 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 has, how difficult has it been in that, in that situation, or the situation that we're in? Well, uh, every law firm is a business as well as being a community service. Um, and in our case, we've noticed not only an increase in the uh, number of people coming to us with domestic violence issues and stress uh, in, in the family um, leading to really relationship breakdowns. Imagine so more, of a, more increase of this pandemic on, onto the, the domestic violence has yes. increased? Uh, particularly with children. I, I, I imagine being effectively on house arrest for, for six months, um, uh, quite apart from the, uh, the need to self-discipline. Uh, not every parent 
has the time or opportunity to uh, to run a household in, in that situation. No one's ever done it before. Mm. Um, so so it, it has re resulted in uh, increased stress, increased domestic violence. Um, my particular business is pretty much funded by the government because domestic abuse cases are government funded. So in terms of financially, we've been shielded somewhat from the effects of, of uh, the pandemic. Uh, domestic violence is seen as a ring fence sort of area. The government's always going to assist with funding it. But I do worry about if uh, this is to continue. Um, there have been some false starts. There have been some mistakes clearly made, uh, as um, uh, your guest has, has indicated. Um, we locked down late. Um, we missed opportunities. Uh, the testing, um, too little, too late, frankly. Um, other countries are seem to be more on the ball. Italy it tested at the airport and so on. And um, as a result, we're now seeing a, a huge rise in cases. But on the positive side, um, the severity of the illnesses, the, the NHS are getting better at treating it. <coughs> they found out that a very cheap drug, dexamethasone, can help it and so on and so forth. And, and, and so um, the hospitals haven't seen the pressure despite the large number of uh, positive cases. So that's a positive sign. Um, but, but we are in a very serious situation. Do you, do, you, do you think that coming to the winter month that we could be in a sort of national lockdown? Do you think that could really happen? Do you, you know? What do you anticipate? I don't think that will be the case. Um, and the reason is that economically, the cost of this has been astronomical. Um, not only here, but in the US uh, and uh, other countries. Uh, and the government realizes that at some point in time, it's all got to be paid for. All this debt will have to be paid back, and the taxpayers uh, in future generations will have to pay it back. It's only 10 years since the financial crisis, and we're still paying for that. So there's no stomach for a lockdown uh, across the country, but I believe that uh, local lockdowns and uh, more targeted initiatives may, may, well, uh, may well and already have taken place in Leicester and so on. Samadbhai. Yes. You're in, your business is quite in an influential area. Suppose he went into a lockdown in, in that particular area. Okay? Businesses, business owners like yourself, okay, what sort of help I mean, would you want from the government? Okay, it's not in a lockdown. Do you, is there grants available? Is there financial help available? I mean, obviously, um, if it is down in a localized lockdown, I, what, what sort of help could you ask the government for? I think in terms of uh, the help from the government that we've had so far, um, it's been more than adequate in terms of what they've given. Um, I don't think we could ask for any more. And I think they were under the pressure from the general public, from businesses, from the citizens of the United Kingdom to give out the help that they did. And I think they were in somewhat pressure to do so. I know uh, our doctor has said, you know, maybe they done too much too quick. That may have been the case, uh, but I think at the time, it, it was felt that they're not doing enough and not doing it soon enough. You know, uh, when they were giving out the grants, you know, people were waiting. Well, when's my grant coming through? You know, my application's been submitted. Why has I, why have I not had an email reply to say it's been um, seen to and it's being processed? You know, so, so that sort of thing. I think given the situation, um, you have to follow it through um, as and when the task in hand. You know, so now we've had the first wave. Uh, we're, anticipa we're anticipating a second wave, and the only w uh, as um, our good lawyer here has just said, I don't think uh, UK will be able to do a national lockdown purely on a financial level. Uh, the first one is, you know, pretty much left the government pocket uh, empty. So uh, to have a second wave and to have a second national uh, lockdown, I think financially the implications are far too um, catastrophic as. Uh, Mike said. So, mm -hmm. do you specialize in accountancy? Okay. We had, a, I mean, I think a lot of small businesses was confused in terms of the help out and eat out, okay? Whether they pay for, is, was there a VAT on it and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, 
what do you have to say to our viewers? You know, in 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 your special, you know, in terms of what you specialize in, in terms of tax and reasons and VAT. I think small businesses have been given a huge amount of relief, including VAT relief. But one thing, just just to get a bigger uh, picture, um, we've been uh, hit by a triple whammy. First of all, over the last three years, we've had a deficit in government. There's been no leadership across the political spectrum. So we're not just talking about the Conservatives, but the Labour Party. Neither parties have really got themselves together over the last three years. So since the Brexit, which was the biggest disaster, in my view, that the UK could face, we've just been going downhill. This crisis hit as soon as the um, recent leadership competition took place within the Conservative Party. They were too busy uh, December uh, or January time. Just to stop you, I mean, we don't have any, any Conservative or <coughs> Labour supporters, so really if we, I mean, if to defend okay, it or... I'm, I'm just talking yeah, about the political talking spectrum. Talking yeah. In just, a broader just, picture. Just, just generally, yeah, so a lack of leadership um, to start off with. Secondly, we were hit by uh, COVID that came along. And the third problem is we don't really know how to get out of it. So we don't know when it's going to end. So whether it's going to be a second pandemic, a third pandemic. So in terms of the help that's been given. Well, the Conservative government has helped the public and the businesses with the furlough scheme, with the grant that is. So they have, they have done certain, uh, uh, they have helped in a certain way. They've helped up to the tune of two trillion pounds. Um, overall economy is going to be hit by about two trillion. Now somebody's going to have to pay for that. On the negative side, we're all going to have to end up paying for it. The government earns no money. It either taxes people in order to collect that money. Of course, Or yes. it borrows it. It can only borrow up to a certain limit and then where does it borrow from? Mm. So we've got goodwill from which the government has been able to borrow so far. So they've been able to give us money, they've been able to give us um, help, especially the salary furlough, that's been immense help to a lot of small businesses. But not everybody's been kept, uh, captured within that safety net. About one and a half million sole traders and self-employed people haven't been covered, and they're struggling. They, they, they are now on universal credit. So <coughs> small businesses, businesses like uh, restaurants and so on that we typically know, have been helped immensely. They've been given VAT relief, which they are not going to have to pay for for so some time. So your self-employed plumbers, self-employed carpenters have not been helped in that, you know, you know in that manner. S same way. That's right. The eat out and help out scheme, I think, should have really been spread throughout the week, so that businesses, customers were encouraged to come out, re get into the nightlife without having to cram that event within the three day window. It has helped somewhat, but it has also created some chaos and has probably and, spread the virus even more. Thank you. I mean, you, your, you, your background in accounting, accountancy, has this pandemic, or you know, the work of accountants, I mean, a lot of small businesses employ, they don't have in-house accountants, in-house solicitors. How much workload has a firm of accountants is taking up extra workload to deal with the HMRC, with the furlough scheme, with the grant, with the, you know, it's, well, accountancy firms themselves have been hit because obviously we uh, reduced number of staff, not all staff were able to come into work. But the workload has increased significantly. In terms of dealing with furloughs, the government rules have become stricter over time. So we need to make sure that all of those guidelines are being followed, especially by our clients. Um, beyond that, the VAT, although it doesn't have to be paid, or it doesn't have to be paid immediately, still needs to be accounted for. Mm -hmm. So the normal compliance work in relation to VAT, in relation to payroll, in relation to tax, and even year-end accounts still continues and still, still needs to be done. Still continues as it is. So the VAT has to be paid and tax have to be paid. Absolutely. And our workforce is what operating about 60% capacity at the moment because others aren't able to come in because they are... Uh, not well or uh, social distancing. So our office, um, structurally, we've been affected slightly. But I think overall, we've been able to rise to the occasion and help out every client and non-clients that have actually asked us for help. So with the bounce back loans, for example, we've, we've helped over 800 businesses obtain their rightful bounce back loans. And that has helped businesses significantly. But again, if that was staged over a few months, that might have been more effective than a short window to claim and absolutely 
let's bring Martin in here. Martin, I mean, obviously, since the lockdown, I mean, you, as a lock, uh, as a law firm, there were, like you said, increase in domestic violence. And it, how how difficult was it to communicate with your client? The mm -hmm. court courts were closed. Some of them mm -hmm. were on on uh, sort of very small window of looking at the cases. How difficult was it? I yes. mean, you know. Well, uh, in terms of the courts, uh, although they weren't strictly closed. Uh, they completely changed the way in which they've worked. Um, uh, some types of business, like for example evictions, have been paused. So, uh, so that gave you a little bit more more time on their hands. Uh, maybe, uh, but um, they obviously. Uh, I, I remember clearly the day when the lockdown happened, when I actually was at court with a family with with five children, and um, there were sort of horrified faces, and, and the news had just broken that you shouldn't be. Uh, you know, uh, attending court uh, at all and um, social distancing and so on, and it was all new. Um, since then, the courts uh, nationally have had to rapidly um, invoke telephone hearings, video hearings, um, dealing with a lot of uh, stuff on paper rather than having a personal attendance of, of uh, litigants. And of course, you can see that down the line there will be a question mark from some about whether that gives a fair trial, whether that is a fair process. Um, but the, in terms of the firm, we, we, we've had to adapt. We've had to rewrite software. We've had to uh, completely rethink our business model. We've had to um, deal with, with clients at a distance over the phone. Um, it's been a challenge. Um, but like all businesses, a recession, for whatever reason, is, is, is also an opportunity. And those that adapt and move into that space and, and, and see the opportunity can, can do well. So it's not all negative. So, so yes, the impact, some business will sell the wave and survive to the next one, and some you know, who doesn't adapt will has suffer. Exactly. It's all about adapting to the situation. But that's, going back to that, Samad Bhai, I mean, you'll see in your industry, you know, the uh, closures of restaurant and uh, and, and yeah. so on. You know, you, I'm, I'm sure, I mean, the, the, the some time ago when we had you on this show, we spoke about it and, you know, there are closures, there are difficulties are facing within the restaurant sector. Yeah, I think in terms of what Martin just said, adapting to the current situation or whatever given situation, very, very important. But at the same time, just adapting to something doesn't really mean that you're going to benefit from it or you're going to be able to survive the wave. I mean, it's really down to your individual business, what type of business and where you're located, you know. Um, I'm quite fortunate, I am in a good area, a very nice area, but at the same time it has its negatives. Um, and the negatives are that, you know, um, not everyone um, are of sort of a younger age, so I'm sort of 50 plus. So it's a lot of sort of semi-retired people, second home people, perhaps um, a lot of them are not so, so social media aware. So in terms of advertising, when we had the lockdown, I weren't able to perhaps do leaflet drops or um, advertise in any other way where we can physically take paper to someone's door. So how do you capture that audience? How do you let someone know we're, we're actually still open, You're still but we're operating, operating as a takeaway, or we've just introduced a delivery service? So those are the kind of hurdles that you have to sort of overcome, and how do you overcome them? So we had to rethink as well, you know. Um, we did a lot of social media advertising. Um, we, luckily, we've got a good local following. So. When we decided that we're going to stay open, we're going to help our local community, we're going to do uh, lots of um, sort of key work, a benefit, uh, free food, etc. You know, the word, actually the word of mouth was carried forward and, you know, a lot of our locals came to our restaurant and said, look, we're supporting you. You know, we found people who visited our restaurant perhaps once every two weeks to come and have a meal inside. They were having a takeaway once or twice a week just to show that they're supporting us, you know, and that is something uh, I will never ever forget. And that gratitude uh, from me uh, will be live, live on forever, you know. So uh, I think community spirit is very, very important. 
So, uh, the, the business rates, it will come to an end in April. Do you think that could, co I mean, in April, come to April, do you think that could follow on for some time more, or do you think, I mean, with, with uh, non-payable for the business rate, do you think that could continue? Do you think that should continue? Well, over 50% of all employees in the UK are employed by small businesses like Samad's. And I think Samad has done extremely well because he's been very dynamic, very energized in trying to adapt to the new situation. But not all business, businessmen have been able to do that. I think um, all the help, including business rates, um, needs to be continued for a time to come because businesses are suffering in terms of rent payments. Uh, they're having to pay landlords, commercial landlords, full rent. Very few tenants have been given any leeway in that regard. And I think commercial landlords have been very unfair in that regard, but they haven't had any help from governments either. So I think the help that's been given by the government needs to continue, perhaps not to the extent that they have, but needs to continue to support small businesses. But Eta Zinish Amir Bay, you need to remember, we're not just restaurants anymore. Our community covers a lot more different businesses than restaurants alone. See, this is, this is what I was talking to Martin earlier on. It's not just restaurant. Mm. The restaurant has a supporting domino effect. Yes. Uh, sort of like a grocery supplier, a butcher uh, supplier, a, a bakery supplier. So and The supply chain is yes. definitely affected. But of course, big businesses, such companies such as Marks & Spencer's, shutting down will have a ripple effect on the whole economy. And, and there will be unemployment. There will be bad news to come. It's hidden at the moment. There are a lot of zombie employers at the moment that are holding on to staff because of the salary furlough. So we need to be a lot more leaner and meaner in the way that the government helps. It has helped a lot, and I think people are grateful for it. But now we need to look for the long term because we need to survive. The government, as I've said, doesn't print money, it can't print money. It has to either borrow it or raise taxes in order to collect it. And at the moment, they aren't collecting much in taxes, so they've been borrowing. What do they do next in order to support the next 18 months? When you, when you said leaner and meaner, what I would like to ask Martin is, the government is unaccountable for three billion pounds. Either they paid out mistakenly or it was claimed fraudulently. These sort of, I, I know you don't specialize in mm. that thing, but as a personal opinion, what, I mean, what do we do? What, I mean, as a public, or, or how do we get the awareness out mm. that it isn't what we, sh uh, what ha there has been, a, what do you say, what do you say in that well, terms? I think, I think the problem is talking about the public, um, public service side of things, we might, we're in danger of forgetting that all government services have also been affected. Um, the HMRC, um, of, but every single aspect of government, the Ministry of Justice, they've all uh, had people working from home, they've all had, so compliance and enforcement of anything has been a problem. The police uh, stretched to the limit um, and they've had to concentrate their, their resources on areas which they've had to prioritise. So for example with, with, with legal aid, um, they just won't accept um, bills from legal aid firms in, in many areas uh, because uh, they don't have the, the staff in the offices to process them. Sometimes they accept them electronically but sometimes they just make payments on account so once again they're kicking the can down the road and I think with, with other businesses um, they will find that the opportunity if I can put it that way uh, for uh, those who want to cheat the system is that much greater. Uh, because there isn't the enforcement. I think fraud and error could be over a hundred billion pounds mm. because we're just talking about salary furloughs. Think about the VAT, think mm. about the rates, think about the corporation tax, think about all of those other things. That hasn't been... When that is fully, you know, when, when the dust cloud clears, yeah. um, we will it's gonna be see much more greater. that there is a lot more. And, you know, un unfortunately, businesses will fail legitimately and as a result losses will occur yeah. but whether those whether that failure was recognized early enough to say look we're insolvent we shouldn't be trading mm. or whether they continue trading insolvent will be a problem that will be investigated later 
But again, do we have the resources to investigate all of that that's going to happen? Because as Martin said, keying the can down the road means that we need extra resources later on in order to collect things together. That's I, I, I think uh, a lot of uh, businesses that were already failing saw this, as the doctor rightly said, as an opportunity to perhaps take advantage of and possibly they have taken advantage of. Otherwise, if it didn't come along, maybe two weeks, two months down the line, they would have uh, closed down anyway. But they saw this as an opportunity to hang on for another six months and get paid for it. So I think um, it's quite important. Um, I mean, the firm of accountants that I use, RCI, Chartered uh, Accountants, every time I want to do something, I always call up my accountant and say, look, this is what I like to do. What do you think? This is what you you're get their advice. This is what you're paying for a professional service. Absolutely. And a lot of a lot of people that I know, they have accountants and they have lawyers. Yet they do something, they action something, and then they call and say, I've done this. What is the point? Well, your so suggestion you is go because you have, you have employed the lawyers Absolutely. and the accountant. Get their advice. Get Absolutely. their the the. the, the I, I always before I make a decision, I say, look, this is what I like to do. How are you advising me? What you know? Uh, do you think I should do this? And this is the service that I'm paying for, and this and rightly they're giving me the correct uh, the guide you know guidelines to follow. So, bye bye. We're going on a commercial break. I hope you've been if, uh, enjoying what my guest has to say and understanding what they have to say for this difficult times that we are facing. I have on my right Dr. Sanwar Chaudhry. Following, I have Martin, um, and then I have Samad Bai, our very well uh, business uh, known businessman um, from Oxfordshire. Gentlemen, um, welcome back again. And, and let's talk about how family life has affected. Yes, it's affected business, but everything is a circle. Everything works in a in, in, in a clockwork manner. So business is is suffering. Family life. How 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 do you think, uh, or if you have a personal thing, is affected the time at home? You know, the, the lockdown. You know, three months or so of lockdown at home. You know. Maybe you have grown children, maybe you have younger children, you know, has it, you know, how yeah. difficult. So nobody, it's, please tell me. It's been a wake up call for yeah. everyone. I think it's bonded families together. We, we spend we, a lot more time. We all say that we need to spend more time together, more time and, as and family we have. time. Yeah? And we have, yeah. Have, I, I think not only that, but I think, um, you know, we spend more time around the house. My wife has learned you know, how to make rasmalai and rasgulla uh, like was going to say better than nothing. I mean, like how to cook. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, right, but. I, I taught her that years ago. <laughs> but I think, again, uh, Martin's here, so yeah. family lawyer. Um, but I think, again, it's been a wake up call for everyone. I think um, we've become come a lot together, but we are now going to do things a lot more differently. Um, I, I've got three sons and a daughter. They've all been working from home. Um, so working from home is something that does work for certain businesses. Of One course, of my sons yes, worked yes, for the government. I think we should have encouraged that before. But now that we are a little bit more, you know, we'll put on it on the spot to do it. Yeah, yeah. work-life balance will definitely change. So a lot more work will take place at home. Of course, what you do can't mm. take place from home. Well, the physical side will still uh, need to be maintained. But saying that you've spent good time where Martin's profession has been uh, a little bit more busier because of the lockdown, because of the stress, because of uh, spending too much time at home. Mm. So, you know, Martin, Martin has seen yeah. what, what a lot of us viewers, uh, we need to talk about it, we need to understand, especially within the Bangladeshi community, we can't just sweep it under the carpet. The domestic violence, I, I would like this to be a topic, it is a business program, but I would like this to be a topic in another you know, show to talk about domestic violence within our community, within the, the whole of uh, the community, uh, whether it's Bangladesh or any other community, but in our Bangladeshi uh, community, we do try to hide it away, we don't talk about it. And Martin specializes in that and he, we. Uh, gentlemen, we have a caller online. Let's see who is calling. A very good evening. Good evening. Yeah, I just wanted to say that happy 
So we could we could understand your uh, thing can be said. Oh, we've lost the caller. Uh, caller, uh, do try again, and we'll try and speak into you. Uh, so going back to Martin, you know, this is something that we in Sanwar Bai's profession, in Samad Bai's profession, we don't hear about it a lot. We don't talk about it a lot. Mm. You know, it is in our community and we do ignore it, hide it. And Martin, uh, you know, like he said before, we have seen a lot of increase in these sort of situation. You know, Martin, how, how you know, obviously, you know, this lockdown, staying at home, you know, you faced certain issues. Mm. How have you dealt with that personally? How have you dealt with that as a business? It's, it's yes. Well, I, I think, of course, it's important to recognize that there are some very happy families out there and uh, they have welcomed perhaps the chance to spend more time together. Perhaps, perhaps they never saw dad because he was always at the office. So there is that positive. But where there are fractures, fractured families, um, dysfunctional families, families with issues, um, this has heightened and uh, brought to the fore those, those problems and issues. Um, people uh, feel, as it were, in lockdown, as if there's no help available, they can't get out of the situation. Um, and we have seen uh, an uptick in the number of cases, the number of cases being referred to us, um, but also, interestingly, uh, an uptick in the, in the number of people who don't go ahead and uh, pursue that to uh, the courts because they think, perhaps, as some here might have thought, that the courts aren't open or um, that the court just can't deal with it or they don't know what to do. Um, the police are under stress. Uh, all of the support services are under stress. So um, it's been a challenging time, but we have gone out to make sure that we are available around the clock um, to people in this situation so that we can help and advise them. And um, business-wise, of course, that is also the right thing to do, quite apart from morally and ethically. Um, um, and uh, many other firms, of course, have taken the opposite view and said, well, we're in a lockdown, we're not going to get um, much work and we, you know, uh, some areas of legal work have fallen off a cliff. There have been no evictions, there have been, uh, you know, very few, um, very much less work in conveyancing. And Talking about eviction, has, has, has that still, the eviction, has it ended, has it got carried on? What, what? Uh, it's now come to uh, a, a, an end, that uh, moratorium, if you like, on evictions, and, uh, but there's going to be a massive backlog. It's extended to January now, isn't it? Uh, I believe it, 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 it was extended up to September, and um, I, I, I know there's a difference between the commercial and residential evictions, mm. but um, there is a massive backlog to clear. The courts are not sitting in person. How are they going to clear it? Um, but um, I, I defer to, to uh, do, my friend. Do, on do you think I'm the fi sure. financial implications made a difference in terms of your, some of your clients coming to you with, as you said, dysfunctional families or violence within the home. Do you think the financial implication, people not having work and people not having the same amount of income coming in on a monthly yes. basis? Yes, I, I think those who, um, as I said, there are other happy families mm -hmm. that are getting on well, but lack of money, um, wondering where the next meal is coming from, the, and we've seen that with the increased use of food banks and everything. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's put and the restriction strain. to go out and, yes. and get the food right. is, is another it was another difficult one. Uh, mm -hmm. If you were trying to get a delivery in, you had to wait a certain amount of time before you can get a delivery. I, I don't know so if I can add to what Martin just said, but you know, although uh, our our business is known to be in an affluent area. Uh, the number of people who, because I put out a message to say, look, free meals for all key workers, all NHS workers, and also to any vulnerable and anyone unemployed, you know, who's lost their job. Um, we didn't ask any questions to verify, or oh, have you really lost your job? So look, if you're saying it, that's it, it's, you know, it's good enough for us. The number of people who uh, had free meals from us uh, within my uh, locality, you know, uh, it's astonishing. I was amazed myself. So it, does, it just goes to show, I think, um, 
uh, given that, taking that, the community yeah. making this you know being there for the community yeah, and yeah. the benevolence of mm. traders such as mm. our catering industry mm. has been immense it's been recognized by the government yeah. because what they have done is gone beyond duty with with the deliveries using working resources the difficult and so on. Yeah. One, using one, one thing um, just to add and sorry to interrupt one customer said to me last week the food that we were giving out free during lockdown, they thought the government were paying us to give out this free food. So the notion uh, that you know we're giving free NHS food and free uh, food to the vulnerable, etc., I think not everyone actually understood where that food is coming from, i.e. the financing. Yeah. Because they all they saw on the news mm. was, right, we're giving 10K to businesses or 20K to businesses, and we're giving them um, uh, relief on business rates. And some of the customers are actually thinking the businesses are being, being paid, paid to yeah, provide, paid to provide it, this. Again, there, is a, there was a lot of confusion yeah. in the general public and understanding yeah. of the uh, eat out to help out. Absolutely. Was it was it fifty percent of the bill? I mean, we, me and Martin I mean, that, was talking about that month I mean, was a lot of lot of lot of difficulties yeah. uh, was uh, faced or a lot of understanding of what the public was thinking, is that 50% of my bill? So I spent 200 pounds, <laughs> is that 100 pounds I'm paying? Yeah. So yeah. a lot of is issues, you, I mean, I, I don't know from your experience, have you faced this? Absolutely, face absolutely. This I, I, I've, had, I've had a number of uh, uh, you know, colleagues and peers who called up and said, look, we've had this problem with the customer claiming you know, they should be getting 50% off their meal. I said, it's 50% off the food and soft drinks, end of, you know, and 10 pound is the cap per person. Mm -hmm. You know, I think, some of the businesses themselves didn't understand, number one, which they should have before they signed up. But again, that's where your professional services come in, you know. Your accountants. Yeah, accountant services your accountants come in, yes. they have to advise you, call them. That's if you, you know, and um, the customers, I think they were just playing ignorance, mm -hmm. some of them. You know, they know what, it, what the game was. But if they, say, if they can get away saying, we're supposed to get 50% and the business then gives them 50% off there on, on, on a way. Rest, restaurant have give, been giving away 50% yeah. of the total bill, which yeah. they can't claim. <laughs> so nobody, I mean, yeah. what do they do with that? So, uh, well. you know, they've given 50%. I'm, uh, you know, I have report of saying a lot of restaurants are giving away 50% of the bill. Yeah, yeah. But do, how do they, how do they uh, yeah. recur, sort of claim back these uh, losses that they've made? Or do they have to fork it out from the pocket because they've given 50% well, off? I mean, the bigger picture is is this pandemic has added about 23% to business costs. So your business mm -hmm. that wouldn't have spent that money, yeah. you're now spending 23% yeah. more on costs and servicing and protection and distancing and so on. Yeah, yeah. You know, social distancing probably means you're only 55%, uh, 60% capacity. Absolutely. I mean, in terms of social distancing and the, uh, the space that we've had to make, I mean, the month of August is pretty much in level with what we would normally do on an August month. Because we've had reduced seats, we've had to logistically work out how we can maximize numbers, still maintain social distancing, social distancing without crowding the restaurant. Uh, absolutely. So it was a logistical nightmare that month because as the doctor rightly said, in terms of having the Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday eat out to help out, crammed into one month, which was very concentrated for the restaurants itself and also the customers. Some, I, I saw places on the news, um, on social media, you know, there were queues outside. So where's the social distancing there? And they were like, you know, literally queuing as if there was a sale going on. There were fights outside. There were. You know, yeah. So, uh, so, I, I, so I, the police yeah. had more work to do, yeah. you know, on, on top of everything yeah. else, mm. trying to sort of space out these lines. The councils have, have actually intervened on a Saturday night, and I think yeah. nine o'clock. So the, in, in every aspect, it's more cost. Yeah. I think, um, mm. sorry uh, to add again, what the government, the initiative they took in order to boost the economy in terms of restaurants, cafes, hospitality in general with the eat out to help out, I think they, set, they did what they set out to do. The goal was to get people out, to get people to the restaurants. Um, that worked perfectly, but I think it's what the repercussions of it uh, wasn't uh, thought the, out. The impact of the yeah. future, I yeah. mean, it, is that that was a short term, but, but for I think long that's term. what's been happening from day one since lockdown. They've been implementing strategies without thinking about exit strategies. Mm. And that's where we have fallen foul, is there's no extra strategy.
So have, have, having the school open up early, having this eat out to help out, giving, them the, giving the public the opportunity to go out more, spike going up. Mm -hmm. So we are on report of today, yesterday, four and a half thousand pe people a day. So this is, has increased, you know, uh, every day is increase. But the good news is the spike is not translating into deaths. Yes. So before that was the case, we're now testing more because we now have mechanisms for identifying mm. the, the virus or the antibodies that relate to it. But luckily, it's not then um, maturing. I think the social the awareness is much more now. So people are aware of the consequences. People are aware of what they need to do. Hence the reason why we've got a reduced number of deaths. It may go up in terms of uh, increased number of um, uh, positive cases, but the deaths will decrease because people are aware of what to do, how to stay safe. You know, you can accidentally catch it. You know, no one's going to purposely, but at least they know they need to wash their hands constantly. They need to stay in smaller groups. They can't visit X, Y, and Z, whatever it is. So I think that's, uh, you know, that's part of the reason why so perhaps... Bhai, so, so coming to um, the six rules, okay? Sanoma Bai's business, Martin's professional business, that's probably don't come into that, but businesses like yourself, the yep. businesses that you run, yep. the number of six, how difficult are you going to find I doing that? that. Yeah? <laughs> I actually welcome that. I actually welcome it because it makes my life a lot easier having smaller groups, limiting groups to six people, in my opinion, for my restaurant, which isn't a massive venue works perfectly for me because I, if I have a number six people coming in, four people coming in, it's easier to have, you know, that table served. Or to, you know, Indian restaurants are renowned for big groups. Indian restaurants are renowned to have a lot of, uh, especially Christmas coming up, you know, 20s, 30s, some restaurants, bigger restaurants, 50 people in one group. The logistical nightmare trying to serve 50 people, the chefs, you know, the stresses, it's, it's enormous. So I, I welcome the six group. <laughs> Fantastic. Martin, uh, let's bring Martin in. Martin, do you, do you, would you welcome, do you think there should be other help for small businesses if we get a local lockdown, if we can get another, you know, businesses obviously are going to struggle, are going to close. Do you think that should be, you know, uh, helped out, you know? Well, it's difficult uh, because there are differences in, in terms of the situation in the north of England, um, places like Leicester. Um, it's all new to everyone. The government is sort of feeling its way. But I think that one of the most difficult decisions that a politician has to make is how is this going to be paid for? Can I justify this um, from public expense? Um, is the the paying of this benefit going to be going to result in uh, a, a larger benefit to the community later on and I think the data is that really some of the help hasn't been targeted correctly we talked about eat out to help out it affects three days of the week uh, there are another four days of the week it didn't affect um, perhaps the government thought people would go out on those days anyway I don't know um, but the end result of that was a lot of people going out on certain days and um, uh, with, with all the best intentions. It was concentrated on the three days it was concentrated and left on the, three on the other which, four. Which yeah. really got groups and a lot more people in three days rather than six, seven days. Yeah. So, nobody, uh, self employed. So, a carpenter, a plumber who is self employed and he has to isolate or she has to isolate for two weeks. How is any help given to uh, this sort of category of the industry in, in, in so two weeks of no work? Has there been any help for these sort of businesses, these sort of self-employed people? I mean, as I said earlier, about one and a half million self-employed and sole traders have been missed out and they need help. They haven't been helped. They've had to rely on the uh, social protection, claiming universal credit and so on. So. They need to be helped. But one thing I just want to emphasize, uh, statistics show nearly 50% of all new businesses fail within two years, which means there were a lot of zombie businesses that would have failed anyway that were helped by these grants which were given to everyone as long as they had a business bank account, as long as there was a limited company, yet legitimate people, sole traders, 
and partnerships that were trading legitimately but weren't under that mm, framework umbrella. missed out. So again, those that needed it missed out, and those that shouldn't have got it got the full grant, mm -hmm. probably got the bounce back loan grants, mm -hmm. and again, those businesses would have probably died anyway. The other thing is, when there is shared office, and it's leased by one person or one company, and you have two other companies operating from that, yes. they were not entitled to any grant at all. Indeed, absolutely. I mean, again, they needed some parameters in order to give out these grants, but they could have done it at a much better uh, localized uh, where the information was much more visible basis than the way, the way they've done it. As I've said, they gave it in haste, they gave mm. too much, too quickly. Too quickly gave it. Instead of giving that 25,000 grant in a block, they could have spread it over, let's say, you know, six months. That would have meant cash flow would have kept on coming in, businesses would have, because it was a wake up call for business. It wasn't business as usual. So businesses had to change and adapt. And if you had allowed them to adapt, Necessity is the mother of all invention. But that necessity was taken away and businesses were given help at a time and that funds, those funds weren't effectively used. I'm not saying they were misused, but they weren't as effectively used as they could have been. So I think the government decided to do these things without proper advice, proper dialogue, in order, almost as a knee-jerk reaction, in order to you know, maintain popularity other, as opposed to be efficient with their business decisions. Mm. Is there going to be a harsh consequences for, for those bounce back loans? You know, in times to come and the business goes bust, is it going to be personally, uh, the, 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 if it's a limited company, it was the directors be personally penalized? What, 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 what? Well, three things. Does the government have enough resources to carry to be that on? able to investigate everyone? Hmm. Yes, there will be. Uh, a certain number that will be chosen, investigated, and perhaps some taken to court. Some will probably face criminal prosecutions, but those will be few and rare. But a lot of these businesses have failed, would have failed legitimately. So what can you do about that? You know, let's say, for example, a car business, um, you know, that uh, had to pay too much in rent, um, you know, accumulated a lot of these liabilities very quickly, and suddenly after the grant period was over, they were in an insolvent position, they go bust legitimately. Who do you, who do you, who who do you blame? You Those car businesses were going bust um, before this pandemic. So you can't just say, oh, you've gone bust legit uh, sort of illegitimately because you've done a fraud. You can't say that because businesses like Marks and Spencers, they have gone bust legitimately. Other businesses, mm. you know, Big businesses like British Airways and Virgin, you know, uh, they are having to be helped out by new cash inflow. So a lot of these small businesses will legitimate. And how do you differentiate between those that are that legitimate failures and those that are illegitimate yeah, failures? Absolutely, absolutely. My worry and my thing is this localized lockdown, you know. Yes. How is it going to be paid for? How difficult is how the taxpayer have to pay for it? But should they be, you know, a little bit more help for these businesses, self-employed people? Well, Sadiq Khan um, was talking with the government of shutting London down from tomorrow. Yeah, so absolutely. if London is shut down, you know, all of the related businesses that are supported by that, how do they fund themselves? If money isn't coming in, if a customer doesn't come, and eat at some other restaurant, the money isn't generated. No. How does he pay the bills? Absolutely. How do you? you it's know, a ripple. It's a ripple. You know. But so. do do you do you, do you think that London will, could be in a lockdown in in, in whole? Let's see. I think it, I think it's, it, you know there's a high probability that we'll be shut down in the next few days. Do, Martin, do you Martin think the whole of all? Well, you, uh, I, I mean, I'm not sure I'm qualified to answer that, but no, I would person, surely help. I would surely hope that that isn't the case because. The economic effects of it, uh, the, 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 the cure is worse than the disease um, in this case. And uh, we've got to think more inventively and out of the box. Um, in terms of, of, of financial management, um, it, it's very, very difficult. And I think the government realizes that with furlough coming to an end, there's going to be a tsunami of people 
losing their jobs. Um, it, it's going, there are many things for the government to think about in the next few months that are very serious. And uh, I would say that uh, localised lockdown makes more sense. If, if you look at the, the map of London, and I did actually take the trouble to look at it, in terms of the number of cases, the number of deaths in each borough, uh, there is a difference. There's quite a big difference. And um, l targeted local measures could work. But it does, it does take inventiveness on the part of the government. But I mean, in terms of a borough in London, targeted, localised, how do you police it? You know, how do you... It's self-policing, uh, isn't it? Do you understand how, how, how difficult it would be to say, enforce it? It's going to be very difficult. And well, it is, but uh, at stations you see that um, there's an increased, I think I've noticed, uh, travel by public transport a lot, there's an increased um, British Transport Police presence. There are ways, but it, the, the coordination, what has been the coordination between the government departments? Um, what has been the thought that's been put into it? Like the um, good doctor said, it, it's very much knee-jerk. It's very much... Uh, what should we do next? Um, almost panic. Um, and uh, I think it's, uh, you may rem remember that at the beginning of the lockdown there were these daily briefings and so on. Um, now we're seeing figures for daily cases almost at the May, well, at the May levels, but no, you know, very little information. So it, there's... A lot of the information has been confusing for the general public. You know, I mean, could we, the number six, as I say, could we have enforced that within the 24 hours of announcement? Did we have to wait for the weekend to be over? Because um, you, why the rule of six anyway in Sainsbury's? They, they must you know, have, there's more than six people uh, gathering in one place. I think they Lots must Lots of places. Have, they must have so something. Nobody, I mean, if, if, uh, you know, the law, I mean, on that Saturday before it came into force from, from the Monday, you had people partying before we can, you know, mm. people were up yeah. in, the, in, in their groups of ten. 20s. <laughs> the hello you, like that, that has <laughs> increased the little bit more of the of the spike. Mm. Mm. I think definitely. Although, as I've said again, and the good news is the spike is not killing people. Mm. Less people are dying now than they have ever died mm. before. <laughs> so March, April, May were really danger months. Now mm. we know a lot more about it. We know how to look after it. We don't look after ourselves. Mm. But about, uh, about lockdown, again, mm. uh, Newcastle is under lockdown, Birmingham mm. is under lockdown, um, you know, Sunderland is uh, uh, under lockdown. So I think you will have a lot more localised lockdown. Mm. Uh, very, very it's difficult times, it's, it's, very it's, difficult. It's very difficult to understand. But I want, I mean, uh, really, to the, the Bangladesh community, I mean, Sanabai, Samadbai, Martin, who works with, with a lot of Bangladeshi community, I want, we are a little bit further of understanding how we can protect uh, the businesses, uh, the Bangladeshi business oriented. You know, you, you could go into some grocery shop, but it's not, you know, it's very small number of people yeah, are yeah. following the rules. How, please say a few words to encourage them, you know, from the bottom of your heart, we need to push the community to understand and put this as an important, uh, it's, a, it's a life and death situation. And Sanobai, you have personally faced um, trauma in this regard, yes. Absolutely. So, so I think just to give an it's internet. Not just business. And, 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 and the result of that, yeah. it affects the business. Your, uh, yeah. I mean, my closest friend passed away right at the beginning of this crisis uh, in March. But just to give an international perspective, New Zealand shut down and did everything properly. It's in the worst recession now in its history. Mm -hmm. um, so again, doing the right thing doesn't always mean you get the best results. Countries like Mexico and Brazil didn't lock down, yet the death rates haven't been as high as perhaps proportionally so, so it's been in the UK. On the line, so we sure. come back to Very good evening, Paula. Good evening to you. Sorry, the line has just dropped. So, Kola, please do try again and we'll go back to Sanwar Chaudhary who was finishing off what he was saying. So, one thing that I would advise seriously is keep hold uh, onto your cash. Mm -hmm. Going forward, bad times are coming. 
they will come and it will come very quickly. Um, obviously, look after yourself health-wise. So, Nobai, we're going to have to close this up tonight. Thank you very much to my guests, Dr. Sanwar Choudhury, Martin, and Samad Bai. Thank you very much for coming in. Viewers, my advice, my guesses, advice, and suggestions, please look after yourself, look after each other, wear your mask wherever you can, sanitize your hand, and if you do have any questions for us in our next episode, please do give us a call, email us, and, and you can join us every Sunday at 10 o'clock. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful evening. Look after yourself and look after each other.